Hello, hello, my name is Kate, and today I'm talking to you a little bit about a studio that I set up in my home. I don't often open up my home to clients because there are many options for us in the area that I'm at for renting studios, and normally we can get a huge variety in within that studio outside of just the white backdrop, black backdrop, whatever color we chose. However, today's client purely just needed a white backdrop, black backdrop, and just to get some portraits, some headshots for business cards. So today I... Okay, I'd say I tidied my house. I, I, I decluttered a little bit, but I have two little kids, so it's not quite so straightforward. So today I'm gonna talk you through the few steps that you need to be able to create an at-home studio so that you can open your space up if you need to, and then it saves your clients some time. And also you can get creative with that studio if you have a little bit of lull in your schedule and you need some more content for yourself. This is actually a part of a four-step series that I'm gonna be producing for you guys. This first one is all about setting up the studio, how I can do it in my home. The second is taking, behind the scenes and I'm gonna film a self-portrait session which is awkward and uncomfortable but we all have to get our photographs out there somehow and this is how I managed to get this session for you and I walked you through how I do it. The third set is going to be showing you how I back up those images, how I cull through them and super fast without wasting any time and the fourth one is a live edit showing you exactly how I'm editing those photos to get those before and afters and that final images. There are a few things that you need for creating an at-home studio that you cannot hmm successfully, because <laughs> you can create an at-home studio however you choose, on a blank wall, on a carpet, whatever you need. But typically to get a professional style at-home studio, you need a few things. The first is to get a backdrop. You can do this in multiple ways. There are cloth backdrops, there are paper backdrops. My preference is always paper backdrops because I, I don't like ironing anything, let alone a 12 foot wide, 16 foot long piece of drapery to put behind a portrait. It's never as clean a look as I'm hoping for, so I prefer paper rolls. So I've got those in white and black, and I always hang them up on my stand. This is a stand that I actually purchased from Amazon a few years ago. It came with those fabric backdrops that are still tucked away in my closet somewhere, and I have not touched them since. <laughs> They're probably gonna get disposed of at some point. I like the backdrops. Uh, these are 54 inch wide paper rolls, and it suits for what I need. Ideally, at some point, I would like to get wider ones, but I need a bigger space to be able to do that, because as you can see, I'm setting it up in my dining room. I've moved the table off to the side. I've thrown the chairs to the other side of the room and I, you know, cleaned up some of the crumbs from breakfast. <laughs> so space is limited. This is what works for me. And these, I can throw them in the back of my car if I need to throw them in an extra studio if we rent a space. Where I can transport them with me and they take amazing photographs. On top of having a clean backdrop to photograph on is you need a tripod. You have to have a tripod that can get up to eye level because as soon as you're trying to you have something a little bit lower and you're photographing up, it's, it's, it's a very awkward angle. It has to be a natural angle, otherwise you're not gonna get the desired look that you're after. So you need a tripod. I would show you what I have, but I've had this for probably 10 years and I've been meaning to upgrade it for a long time. So on a side note, if anyone has any recommendations on a tripod that I should take a look at, throw a comment below and I will be thrilled to take a look because it's on my to-do list. The third thing you need is a remote. There are multiple different remotes out there for different cameras. So depending on the setup that you have and what your capabilities are on your camera, I have the, Ni the Nikon, I have to get over that. <laughs> I have the Canon R6 and it actually comes with a Bluetooth remote. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is a BR-E1 Canon Bluetooth remote and it was a game changer, especially when I pair it up with my camera because I was using a Nikon before and I didn't have a slip out screen and I couldn't autofocus, so it was it was more hassle than it was worth. So this sucker is fantastic. I can focus from this remote. I can have my camera set up for auto facial tracking, so it's always focused on my face. Night and day difference. So I have so many portraits that I can use for all the different content that I need because as a photographer, you need a lot of content all the time. <laughs> so this way you don't have to have someone behind the camera and you can just set your camera up and you can just click away. Another thing that you need is something that you need in any photograph you ever take and it has to be quality, otherwise it's going to look like 
it's not going to be your best work. <laughs> so you need a light source. That can be a natural light. It can be by a window. Depends on your setup, the space that you have. You can purchase. I got these newer softbox lights from Amazon, a two pack. I'll link it below for you. You can take a look at that. That's what I started with and they worked great, but then I needed extra power. So then I upgraded and I now have the Pro Photo, the B10 Plus. And I tell you, I'm, I'm going to do a whole review on that in the next few weeks here. And it was absolute game changer. I won't ever do an indoor shoot without that anymore. It changed my ways. And last but not least, which is actually, I suppose the most obvious is you need your camera and a quality lens, whichever lens you choose, make it work for you. I do a lot of my portraits. I've actually self portrait with my 50 mil 1.2. It is my it's my favorite portrait lens. It's not too heavy for my tripod because like I said, it's pretty dated. So it doesn't like the added weight of say my 85 mil or the 28 to 70 because those suckers are huge and heavy and it's not a good situation. That's what I use. Make sure you have those lists. You've got your backdrop. You've got your rolls of paper or fabric if that's what you choose. You need a tripod, you need a remote, you need a light source and you need your camera and your lens. So you don't need a ton of things. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive, but you just need some of each of them to make life smooth and simple and be able to create a lot of self portraits in home studios. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is a four part series. So you are going to see in my next video, I'm gonna walk you through a self portrait session, how I kind of take those photos. You're gonna see the good and the bad. And then I'm gonna walk you through how I call those photos, choose my favorite photo super fast, really efficient, and I'm not the fear of deleting photos. It's so seamless, it's super quick. I'll just walk you through all that. And then in my fourth and final video of this sequence, I'm going to be doing a live edit for you. And it's gonna just, I'm showing you everything that I do and how I would go about making the final images exactly what I want them to be. So thank you so much for being here today and taking a look and seeing what I have to share with you. I hope this has helped you and gives you an idea on how you can set something at home and be a little creative if you uh, have a little extra time.